Hey everyone. So today I want to speak about what Kama Sutra, Tantra, what these words are, because many, many people talk about that all the time. Like Tantra is as a word that we're hearing everywhere. It's a buzzword on Facebook. It's kind of censored in Facebook as well. But there are many, many people who use the word Tantra, even teachers who teach it, who don't really know what Tantra means, nor Kama Sutra. Like Kama Sutra, as many people know from the bookstores and you walk through and you find these books, these erotic drawings where people make love in all the very crazy positions where you feel like, oh, you have to do a lot of yoga to achieve that kind of <laughs> intensity and in lovemaking and it promises you to expand your pleasure. And I want to speak about the connection between Kama Sutra and Tantra and if there's any today and what it really is because there's so much misconception around these words. Um, even for me, as, as I, I taught, not necessarily Tantra, but I have taught many of the practices that this ancient tradition offers uh, in some way or another. And now that I've studied it deeper, I have a very different understanding and I just want to bring it to you because it helps us to clarify what is actually offered when you go into a tantric container, when you go to a tantric workshop, when you go to a tantric festival, what is going to await you there? Because a lot of people think tantra slash orgies. Oh yeah, we're just going to have sex and it's going to be this mass, this massive sex fest. And it is not. Tantra is something very, very different. But let's start with the first question. What has Tantra to do with Kama Sutra? What does the Kama Sutra have to do with Tantra? And the answer is nothing. <laughs> and not because Tantra doesn't incorporate pleasure, because what, what Kama Sutra actually means is it comes from the scriptures, the ancient scriptures, Kama Sastra, which means science of pleasure. So the Kama Sastra is a scripture that reveals how you can learn to intensify and enlarge and expand your pleasure in lovemaking with your beloved. And that is beautiful in and of itself, but it does not apply to the definition of Tantra and what Tantra is actually leading to. And then, so let me just speak because I don't have so much time today, but what, let me speak to the, the definition point of Tantra that is um, probably most often misunderstood. Tantra in and of itself means actually just scripture or book or yeah a piece of a, like a piece of um, theory and a, a tantra is a scripture that has revealed a certain um, complete spiritual practice so these tantras there were scriptures or there are scriptures that are um, that were emerging after the sixth century and yeah, they hold a lot of truth and a lot of wisdom and a lot of depth. And most of these scriptures are not available to us in this common day and age. Most of what we have available to us are the commentaries on these tantric scriptures of tantric masters who've studied them and then who've given them out to their disciples. So most of the real original tantric scriptures is not available, especially not to the Western people, because we don't read Sanskrit, which is the language that these scriptures are in. Ah, so Tantra means a divinely revealed scripture um, by the god or by the goddess, really. And it is always in some way, in some form, the, the, the conversation of Shiva and Shakti, the divine feminine and the divine masculine and how they interact. And the purpose of a Tantra, of one of his scripture, is to lead you to enlightenment. And that is... The, the, the magic thing about Tantra is that it has in its definition two goals, the higher and the lower, the enjoyment of the higher and the lower uh, levels or reigns of life. So the higher is obviously ascension, is uh, enlightenment, is the, the learning that we are not just this body, we are not just what we think and identify ourselves with, but that we are God in the flesh. And when we realize that, we um, become tantric beings and the lower the lower goal is the enjoyment of pleasure the enjoyment of power the enjoyment of abundance all of what the worldly offers us so tantra has both goals in its definition and here comes the point though the higher is always higher than the lower so 
we are not going into pleasure just for pleasure's sense or sake. We're not just expanding pleasure, expanding our pleasure potential because we want to be super pleasurable. We're expanding that pleasure potential always because we want to reach a higher state of consciousness, because we want to expand our whole being to be able to make love to God. So the this is very important and something that a lot of people miss because it's very easy to sell Tantra through the kind of sexy f forefront of, oh yeah, we are just, um, we're making love here, we are, we're expanding pleasure. Everybody talks about how we, how we can, you know, even me, our course, Go Touch Yourself, is all about like, how can we extend and expand pleasure? But at the deepest core and at the highest goal, everything that I do and ev everything that me and Sai share is uh, for the evolution of our species, for the evolution of your heart, for the evolution of your soul, to be able to reach and stretch up to the wholeness of life and merge with life so completely that there is no separation anymore, that you don't feel you are alone because you've understood that life comes through you, that you are the other and the other is you, that there is nothing but you in this world. So if you don't have the, if you don't have the, the goal of ascending, then you are not on a tantric path. If that is not your right, if that is not the right view that you're aligning your your spiritual path through then going into pleasure will just be another hedonistic adventure it can be beautiful and yes of course we can enjoy ourselves so much in that realm but you will hit the ceiling at some point you will hit the ceiling of what can be experienced because without the spiritual realm with that missing you will never deepen and go as low as dark and deep and high and uh, ecstatic as we are humanely possible like we have been given this in incredible ability to transcend what what is in this world and it's 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 a wonderful thing so it's very important for me to for you to understand that tantra is uh, the original tantra is a path to enlightenment and a fast track to enlightenment meaning it was given originally only to the very very um yeah, the very adept seeker, somebody who was clear on really that goal of like ascension. I am not going into this for anything else. So they were given these teachings and these tantras, these spiritual practices to purify their body, to clean up their channels, to be able to channel frequency and energy through their body and l bringing it up and using it to ascend their hearts, to ascend their wound woundedness and, and everything actually not even their woundedness, just to ascend. And what we've done in the West, we've taken this tantric practices and kind of fitted them into our system. So we added some psychology into it. So the neo-tantric approach now brings a lot of other things into tantra because the Western human, <laughs> the, we are just not equipped to work with these scriptures uh, on, on a basis that, that will really help us. So we've added a bit of the other things to it which don't have so much to do with Tantra in and of itself actually. Um, but it's still good that this is out there because we are also still needing to learn how to clear our blockages because most of the ancient Tantric practices were for people who, you know, pr practice yoga every day, open their bodies every day, have, have very different relationships to their bodies. Nonetheless, Tantra is, an, is a beautiful um, spiritual teaching that can be practiced by anyone and by anyone of any faith. You don't have to change your re religious view or anything. That's what I love about it as well. It's, it's, it's very um, profound in where it reaches us when you really, really look deep. There's a couple of more things that Tantra in essence as the definition encapsulates, which I'm not going to go into today, but I uh, just really wanted to make this clear that Tantra is a science of ascension. It's a science to liberate our bodies. It's a science to liberate our souls from the shackles of this life, from the, from the suffering that we are carrying because we are identified so much with so much that we are not. And um, yeah, if that interests you in any way or form, there's, there's always a lot of tantric workshops out there and Sai and me happen to uh, be presenting on the One World Tantra Festival very soon. I'm going to put the link in the, uh, in the comments soon. And 
so if, if you feel like joining some of that journey into your through the exploration of your body through the exploration of your emotions and your soul at the deepest level to reach a higher state of consciousness where you no longer get so triggered where you no longer take life take life so serious that it drags you out of who you actually are and it drags you into a state of being that is completely compressed and condensed if you're interested in walking that path to ascend your being because this is what's needed right now on this planet immensely and intensely then go and find yourself like go study this 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 ancient world of knowledge and wisdom that is thousands of years old and has so much to offer because it didn't just come into place yesterday it's been here for many 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 years and many 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 people have tried it and it has worked and has brought people deeper and deeper into themselves so yeah, I wanna invite you to the One World Tantra Festival. I'm gonna do some things, Simon's gonna do some things, and many, many other amazing tantric facilitators are gonna share and show up with their wisdom. And I feel that at this moment in time, we are approaching a silent revolution. In this earth, on this earth, on this planet, what is going on right now cannot be fought with guns, cannot be fought with all the tactics that we've been taught over thousands of years as the ways to deal with conflict. No, right now we are asked to step into a different kind of rebellion that is silent, that comes deep from inside of ourselves, that comes from our hearts yearning to make love to life and to go and completely immerse, emerge and merge with our fellow brothers and sisters because we are inseparable. And at the same time, we need to take care of that which is still wounded, of that which is still reactive, of that which wants to be angry right now at the, at the situation in life. But we can, we can make this silent rebellion by learning and expanding our heart's capacity every single day a little more. Every single day you have the feeling that life is dragging you down. Remember that this is your calling. This is you being called by life into like, uh uh, this is not the way. Your state of being, your natural state of being is bliss, ecstasy, peace, calm, meditation. Everything is accessible for you there. But you're gonna go there and we're gonna stop giving all that drags us into the suction of the drama of life. What's going on in the world? What's happening? Who did this? Who said what? Whoa, this person has not my view. It's not about that. It is about going deep inside and clearing out what is blocking you from being fully sovereign, from being fully you and free on your own feet. Nobody's here to tell you anymore what you can do and what you can't. Take full responsibility, learn what it means to take full responsibility of all of your choices and everything. Then pleasure will be yours, then ascension would be yours, then emotional maturity will be yours. Everything is at your fingertips, but I don't mean social media. Everything is at your fingertips to explore. If you open your eyes and see life and see what it offers you every single day, so much gratitude. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy it all. <laughs>